Hi there, and welcome. In order to have a successful journey, it's essential to know where we started, where we want to go, and whether or not we are on the right track. This is true for TPM, which is also a journey to making significant and sustainable long-term improvements across a wide range of human and technical capabilities. Fortunately, in TPM, there is a specific set of metrics for measuring our progress. Some of these are common sense metrics that don't require formulas, such as the time to respond to a machine breakdown or the number of people trained to perform basic daily cleaning and inspection tasks. Other metrics, such as overall equipment effectiveness and mean time between failures, do require making observations, collecting data, and performing simple calculations. It's important to be familiar with TPM metrics as we will use them across all phases of the TPM transformation journey. In the middle and later phases, Regular review of the TPM metrics helps us to know if our improvement actions are delivering sustainable results. This allows us to adjust course when needed as we pursue zero breakdowns, zero accidents, and zero defects. In the very first phase of TPM, organizations follow TPM implementation steps one through five. The first three steps involve education, commitment, and creating a support structure. During these first three steps, we become familiar with these TPM metrics. Then, in step four, we set TPM targets based on our business priorities. Once we understand how to measure the impact of TPM, we can then decide how we want our TPM program to contribute to our company's long-term vision. Then, these targets are broken down into shorter-term objectives. In step five, we draft a TPM master plan based on an understanding of the business objectives and how the TPM metrics will help achieve them. It also requires aligning resources and setting priorities across the organization. Aligning TPM activities involves breaking the major goals down into sub-goals and selecting the approach, priorities, and strategies required to meet those goals. When setting targets and deciding how we keep track of the effectiveness of our TPM efforts, it's important that we do this from three perspectives to get the full picture. These are business results, developing people's capabilities, and intangibles. We can further break down the business results achieved from TPM into four types. These are cost, cash, revenue, and capital expenditures. For example, focused improvement activity systematically reduces equipment losses. This reduces costs associated with breakdowns, quality defects, energy, materials, and labor costs. As a result of equipment change over time reduction, it's possible to reduce production lot sizes reduce work in process inventory, and free up cash. As we reduce various equipment losses and improve our overall equipment effectiveness, this creates additional capacity. The added capacity gives an organization the opportunity to capture new business and produce and deliver more goods, enabling the organization to increase revenue with the same asset base. In addition, it's common for TPM to reduce or delay the need for capital expenditure. When a production line that is running at 40% OEE needs to double production, TPM provides an alternative to investing in a new production line. The systematic elimination of the six big losses can raise the OEE to 80% or more, effectively doubling the output with zero or minimal capital expenditure. In addition to improving equipment output and productivity, TPM is also very effective in contributing to cost reduction by improving safety, reducing pollution, raising quality levels, saving energy related to equipment use, and by streamlining administrative and support processes. These may be individually tracked as process metrics and linked with financial goals. TPM activities in the planned maintenance and autonomous maintenance pillars help to reduce a plant's maintenance costs, such as spare parts and labor. The key in the education and planning phase is to understand the relationship between the TPM metrics, various TPM activities, how they address equipment losses, and how these impact the plant's financials. These two pillars are also good examples of the importance of having metrics for developing people. A major contributor to the success of TPM involves upgrading the systems and the skills and knowledge of maintenance people, as well as the training and development of frontline equipment operators. These can be tracked through visual training matrices, awarding certifications, and by measuring the ratio of the types of maintenance work. For example, the ratio of planned maintenance to breakdown maintenance is a good metric indicating that an organization is developing capability to become less reactive to breakdowns 
by doing more to prevent and plan our maintenance work. We can measure the overall reliability of both equipment and the maintenance function by using metrics such as mean time between failures, time to respond, and mean time to repair. We can also link our metrics of maintenance capability back to financials, such as the spending on spare parts, direct repair costs, or outsourced repair work cost. A major part of the success of TPM depends on engaging frontline equipment operators and supervisors. This begins with autonomous maintenance through activities such as daily cleaning, inspection, and lubrication of their machines with the goal of keeping equipment in good running condition. Equipment operators participate in small group activities to find and fix problems in their equipment. The TPM education pillar raises the knowledge and skills of machine operators, enabling them to detect early warning signs of problems. Intangible benefits may include improved morale, engagement, teamwork, attitude, and the atmosphere of the workplace. In some cases, these can be quantified through employee surveys, the number of improvement ideas generated, or reduced employee turnover. While intangible benefits are, by definition, more difficult to track, they are critical for strengthening the cultural foundation necessary for long-term success. That concludes our review of how to measure the effectiveness of your TPM efforts. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.